My cat, Mr. Muffin, has a problem. Do you see that redness right along the gum line? Those are irritated gums caused by tartar, which could lead to tooth loss. There are several possible solutions, and none of them is great. Some are risky, some are ineffective, and some are not very practical. So I went in search of a solution, and most of the vet sites that I saw recommended toothbrushing, which sounded rather difficult, so I went in search of advice. My first stop was Jackson Galaxy, and I watched his video, Should I Brush My Cat's Teeth?, which I will link in the description below. He says right away in his video that uh, it's his personal opinion and that you should consult with your vet about your old cat's dental health, which I think is great advice. But I have a quibble with Jackson Galaxy. <gasps> Should I even be getting into a quibble with him? I mean, he's the guru of cat advice, right? Let me hold off on the quibble for a moment. Back to Mr. Muffin's problem. And this is not just Mr. Muffin's problem. According to research, more than 50% of cats older than three years old have some kind of inflammation of the gums, which is leading to mouth problems. Now, I wouldn't have known about Mr. Muffin's problem if I hadn't taken him to the vet for his annual checkup, where the dentist pointed it out to me. So your cat could be having similar problems and you just don't know about it. Cats are notorious for hiding their pain until the very last moment. Welcome to Nine Lives to Live, where I work with my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall, and Mr. Muffin, to help you improve the lives of your indoor cats. The problem is called periodontal disease, which starts with a film of plaque, which is basically a film of bacteria, I know, disgusting, forming on the teeth. This plaque then hardens into a mineral um, composite called tartar, or in some cases called calculus by dentists. In this photo of Mr. Muffin's mouth, you can clearly see the tartar and you can see the red irritated gums. If periodontal disease is not treated, it can lead to bad breath, to pain, and even to tooth loss in your cat. In some cases, it can also lead to heart, kidney, liver, and other problems if the bacteria reaches their bloodstream. Many cats will not have these problems, but some will due to a variety of factors, including genetics, the level of bacteria, what their saliva composition is like, the kinds of foods they eat. Now, Mr. Muffin has this problem, but Calypso and Skyfall don't, even though they eat exactly the same food and have the same routines. I don't know why. I think it might be partly because he's part Persian and that he might have a genetic predisposition. There are several ways to prevent these problems, including having your cat's teeth cleaned, changing the food that they eat, and brushing their teeth. Let's start with the idea of periodic cleaning. This seems like a reasonable solution. Every year or so, you would take your cat to the dentist, they would clean the cat's teeth, and voila, problem avoided. But not so fast. In order for dentists to clean your cat teeth, they need to put your cat under general anesthesia. And in my opinion, general anesthesia is not to be taken lightly because there can be complications. The smallest of these complications are that if you have more than one cat, your cat might come back from the vet with a different smell and create uh, disharmony in the household because your other cats don't recognize them. Another issue is that uh, dental cleaning is expensive and it can cost several hundred dollars, including x-rays and blood work before the, give it, being given anesthesia. Lastly, there's the possibility of medical complications, including heart arrhythmias, pneumonia, and even death. According to the Journal of Anesthesia and Analgesia, the risk of death to a cat undergoing general anesthesia is 0.24%. That's a little less than one in 400. I will link the source of that, that information below in the description. But if you take that number and you multiply it by say 12 cleanings over the lifespan of your cat once a year for an indoor cat after three on average, that in increases the risk to about 3% over the uh, cat's lifetime, which is not a very big risk, but it's there. The risk is lower when your cat is younger and increases as your cat gets older, which unfortunately is when your cat will probably need more dental care. So you might need to have your cat's teeth cleaned, but the more you can reduce that need, the better it is for your cat. Which leads us to brushing your cat's teeth. Now in the wild, cats don't have toothbrushes, obviously, but their teeth get cleaned by all the fur and the feathers that they have in their mouths on a daily basis from the hunting that they're doing. But our indoor cats don't have that, and so vets are recommending brushing to make up for that. 
Now, brushing your cat's teeth is not easy, and it's easiest if you start training them as kittens, but I didn't do that, and I assume that most of you have not done that, and so we have to train them as adults. Now, they make specialized toothpaste for cats with flavors that they will supposedly like. Uh, don't give them human toothpaste. It has ingredients that will make them sick. You can get a kit like this, which comes with the toothpaste and a toothbrush, as well as a finger sheath. I'll put a link in the description below in case you want to purchase something like this. But I have three cats, so I also got uh, these two baby uh, brushes human for human babies, which are, are smaller and have very uh, soft bristles. You don't want to use the same brush on all your three cats in order not to spread the bacteria between their mouths. In order to brush their teeth, start by letting them smell it, letting them get used to the smell of the toothpaste, or let, let, letting them actually even taste it. You will also want to start by touching their gums, touching their mouth, and letting the, them get used to the flavor of the toothpaste before you try any kind of brushing. Put a little bit of the toothpaste on your fingertip and run it along the side of their mouth, along their gums. Be gentle with them and uh, expect that they won't like it at the beginning. Uh, none of my cats liked it. Uh, Calypso and Skyfall got used to it a little bit faster than Mr. Muffin, who really didn't like it. Maybe because his gums hurt. Now, you know your cats. Don't do anything that will lead to a cat bite. Now, I know my cats won't bite me, although Mr. Muffin has given me some really dirty looks. A cat's mouth is full of bacteria and you really don't want to get bitten. Some kits come with a finger sheath that you can use to uh, also apply the toothpaste. Don't push it too hard each time. Give it a try and once you start getting impatient and too squirmy, just let them go and give them some treats. After they start getting used to the toothpaste and your fingers on the sides of their mouths, it's time to move up to the toothbrush. Now to help you with that, let me show you this chart of a cat's mouth. These are the cat's teeth. Generally the front teeth, the canines and incisors, form less tartar. You want to focus more of your time on the premolars and the molars, which you can see in red. And you only need to work the outsides of the teeth, not the insides. Cat's tongues are very rough and they generally clean the inside of the cat's teeth. As I was editing this video, I noticed this photo of the inside of Mr. Muffin's mouth and I noticed the amount of tartar on the inside of his teeth. So maybe cat's tongues don't work quite as well as we think in cleaning the insides of their mouths. The most important part to focus on, if you have that luxury, is where the gum line meets the teeth. Many of the recommendations that I have read from veterinarians are impractical. They suggest brushing your cat's teeth once or twice a day for 30 seconds per side. I don't know, I assume that they've tried to hold down a, a squirming cat for 30 seconds, but that's a very long time. So I'm not sure what they're thinking. Maybe it's just an ideal to shoot for. So let's get practical. The goal here is to reduce the amount of plaque in your cat's mouth. And anything you can do to accomplish that, even if it's small steps, is good. Choose a place and time that is quiet. And if you can close the door to prevent your cat from running off and hiding, you will save some time. Make sure to sit behind them because if they try to get away, they will back up and you need to be there to hold them. Use a small amount of toothpaste because they will be eating some of it. I don't think you have to do this for a long time. Just swipe the toothbrush along the side of their teeth a few times to, tr to try to get as much of the plaque off. They do not have to open their mouths as long as you can get the toothbrush uh, to touch their teeth along the sides. Go slowly, be gentle, and try to avoid bumping their gums with the hard part of the toothbrush. When you've finished, make sure to wash your hands and the toothbrushes because cat's mouths have a lot of bacteria that you want to get rid of. If you can do just that much, it will help a lot. Uh, increase the timing and the frequency if your cats allow it. My technique is not very good, but I'm trying to improve and hopefully over time I'll get better at it. One of the possible complications of brushing their teeth is that your cats will grow suspicious of you when you approach them. They'll be wondering, or am I gonna get the brush? Uh, so one of the things you want to do, I think, is approach them and touch them as much as possible when you are not going to brush their teeth. So I would say at least 10 to one, 10 times that you're not brushing and one time that you are. Otherwise, it might get in the way of your relationship and they'll start becoming suspicious of you. 
If your cats absolutely will not uh, tolerate brushing, they also make dental gels, which are supposed to get rid of some of the bacteria that create the plaque. Now, I have not used those gels. If you have any experience with those gels, please leave a comment uh, below for all of us to see. Have treats ready for them when the brushing is finished, which leads us to the next point, which is the food that they eat. Now, maybe I have been feeding my cats the wrong food for their dental health. And this is where I have a little bit of a quibble with Jackson Galaxy. He said in his video that a dry food will not help your cat's dental health. But I'm not sure that's the case based on the research that I have done. Now, I feed my cats mostly wet food up to now. And I think that has been a mistake. In an article from the Veterinary Oral Health Council, they said, and I will quote it, the food's texture and makeup can affect the environment of the mouth. It can help maintain tissue integrity, stimulate saliva production, alter plaque bacteria metabolism, and provide mechanical cleansing of tooth surfaces. All this seems to imply that dry food will help your cat's dental health. But the article also says, However, clinical studies have shown that dry food alone does not contribute to improved oral health. So what's going on here? Why, why that contradiction? The answer is in the size of the kibble. And the article explains, dental food kibbles are built differently from conventional kibbles. These kibbles are bigger, forcing the cat to actually chew them instead of swallowing them whole. These larger kibbles scrape plaque from the tooth as the cat bites through them. But I don't know anything about the Veterinary Oral Health Council. For all I know, they could be funded by the cat food industry. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that I don't know. So I decided to test this out myself. Here's a slow motion video of Mr. Muffing eating normal sized kibble. Notice that he barely chews it before swallowing. Here's a video of him eating a Greenies dental treat. Let's count how many times he chews that. So there's our answer. All that chewing has to have some effect on his teeth. But let me just mention here that this is not a discussion of wet food versus dry food. That's another issue that deserves a video all its own. It seems reasonable to me that if a cat is only eating wet, mushy food, it is not using its teeth. Veterinary dental specialist, Dr. William Rosenblatt, chief of dentistry, oral medicine, and surgery at an Angle Medical Center in Boston, Explained to Catnip, Tufts University's newsletter on cat health, because of a cat's dental anatomy, a diet of hard food and or crunchy treats accompanied by a ready supply of water is definitely helpful from a dental standpoint. The link to the article is in the description below. In addition, I'd like to point to a Dutch clinical trial, which I will not try to pronounce, on the effectiveness of feeding large kibble to cats with gingivitis. Let me read you their final conclusion, which said that cats fed on the large kibbles with mechanical cleaning qualities had significantly less gingivitis and tartar. So I think that uh, Jackson Galaxy is partly right. Most dry kibble will not help your cat's dental health, but feeding them large kibble, which they are forced to chew, will help them. No disrespect to Jackson Galaxy. I love you, man. You are the best. So how do you know if your cat is having dental problems? Well, here are some signs. Bad breath, a sensitive mouth, loss of appetite, loss of weight, yellow or brown deposits on their teeth, swollen, red, uh, sensitive gums, loose or missing teeth, pawing at the mouth, a hard time chewing, hissing and running away from their food. If you notice these things, uh, the best thing to do is take your cat to the vet for a dental evaluation.
One important element that I didn't mention very much is drinking water. Uh, water helps to wash away the food and maintain general oral health. But many cats don't drink a lot of water and you have to encourage them. And this video right over here will show you exactly how to do that. So go watch it.